Welcome to Terra at Home with your host, Chris Moretti. Good morning and welcome to Terra at Home. Welcome also to the month of September. I'm joined by Amy Dominano, Regional Greenhouse Manager for Terra. Thanks so much for being with us, Amy. Thanks for having me. We're in a new month and yes. with September comes back to school and starting to think about establishing routines again and of course the coming of fall. Yes, It's exactly. going to be knocking on our doors before we know it. So mm. this morning we're going to talk about great ways to transition your summer yep. outdoor look into a bit more of a fall feel for mm -hmm. something that's going to really look nice all the way through the fall season. Yes, after the hot summer months a lot of our planters out front are starting to look a little bit yucky and you know, so freshen them up, get them ready for fall and everything cleaned up. Fall is one of my favorite times of year for planters, yes. especially. Um, we've got some really beautiful options in those wonderful earthy warm colors. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we've got here yeah. in sort of a, a summer planter that we're going to switch out to make it appropriate for fall. Yes, exactly. It's not about replacing everything in your planters, but it's about going through them, getting them cleaned up and transitioning them to look more fall-like. So I chose one like this. It's got some of your tired annuals in it, some, some of the purple angelonia and marigolds, but it's also got some cr great fall colors in it, like this canna lily. It's the nice bronze for fall. It's got a tropical croton in it. So I thought, why don't we transition this one up and get it looking a little bit more fall-like without having to redo everything in so, it. So yeah, if you've got planters at home, you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to start from scratch. You can no. perhaps use some of the existing material if it's appropriate, especially things like grasses, cannas, oh, like you said, are great and they'll mm. withstand some light frost. Yep. Um, so they're good to have all the way until that mm. point. And even some of the little, the trailers, even things like marigolds might not be the worst thing to leave because oh, exactly. they've got that fall palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So today I'm just going to actually replace some of the things for you and dig them out. Um, using, I'm just going to use a sharp trowel and just pull them out. So I'm going to dig enough root space out so that I can fill it with something fresh pull them out and just quickly replace them with something a little more fall like you're gonna make this look so easy for us amy i'm gonna make a huge mess but I that's okay that's the fun of making a planter yes. i think and that's why we're going to enjoy all this mm. great time outside yeah. <laughs> so just in doing that i've created some open holes that i can just simply fill in with other plant material so i've chosen things like a fall garden mum and we'll just put take that out of its pot and simply plop it in now, mums have sort of become the fall staple uh, as far as, as mm -hmm. fall color in the landscape. Yeah. Um, but they're really appropriate even for late summer. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're so yeah. bright, they're showy, and they're mm -hmm. going to continually blooming all the way until frost, really. Exactly. And now is the time where naturally in your gardens you'll start to see garden mums come to flower. So it's going to coordinate with your garden. Beautiful. Oh. So I've got a nice fall cabbage to go into something like this, a fall kale. I've left the trailers in just because they do look nice and they would complement the planter. And then maybe we'll just add a pepper to the other side of this one. We want to take out this one last. Oh, sure, uh, yes. That'll give you a bit more room, too. Yeah. I don't have my handy trowel, so no. I'm going to just so give her a yank. Give there it a she yank. goes. Yeah. And then a nice ornamental pepper that, um, it's a seasonal favorite. People love this guy. And just dig that one right into that one nicely. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Let's so, talk about some of these options. So we mm -hmm. mentioned the mum, it's sort of the fall standard. Yes. Uh, cabbage and kale. Yes. Wonderful, and I love them because they just get better and better as they it gets do. colder. The colors get deeper. This one's a purple flowering one, so it's going to get a deeper purple flower on it through the season. Um, there's whites also, so there's lots of nice choices, and they will actually let snow fall right on top of them. So they're really hardy. Um, and they go great with all your reds and yellows and things like that. We've got ornamental pepper as well, which as mm -hmm. you said is a really big favorite. Yes. Um, also perfect for late summer. So even mm -hmm. right now in September, yeah. it's pepper season in the gardens. It is. So they're established really nicely yeah. and they're going to adapt beautifully to a planting yeah. situation. And the colors are just going to get better in them as well as the season goes on. So. Let's talk about using some of these ingredients in your fall garden now. Now mm -hmm. we can use all of these same sort of philosophies in, in changing things out in the summer garden to make it a little bit fresher, a little bit cleaner, Absolutely. a little bit nicer. Certain things, you, they'll just get tired as the season goes on. The hot summer months, they, they drag, they get dried out. So pulling out some of your annuals in your garden beds and replacing them with some nice colorful garden mums or kale, even asters, things like that will definitely brighten it up for a low cost. What about hanging baskets? Um, hanging baskets, of course, are, are big favorites in the summer, mm -hmm. but not often things we think about all that much in the fall. How would we switch those out? 
it's just as easy. You Same can come here. We do have um, built hanging baskets for fall, absolutely, but you can also pull out some of your annuals in them, maybe keep some of your nice green trailers in them, and pop in some mums and peppers and things like that, just to freshen it up. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we've got other examples of great fall planters yes. here, too, using some of the other optional material, too. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, we've kept our big, beautiful, bold Yeah, canna. just because of the color. It's yeah. a great color. Mm -hmm. It's got nice height, structure, provides a focal point, mm. but other options are, are viewable in these planters where we've got millet over here and a beautiful ornamental grass yes. over there. I mean, grasses really come into yeah. their own in the fall season and they're great options. Yeah, grasses are beautiful and quite often people already have grasses in their planters from their early season planting yeah. and you can do the same here. Pull out all your other things and replace around the grass. So keep your grass because it is, like you said, nicest in the fall. In the landscape as well, ornamental grasses are looking spectacular oh, come September. Yes. So they're a beautiful backdrop to play with some of the great seasonal colors and other available plants too um, to play off of that grass as well. Yes, that's exactly what I do. I have beautiful ornamental grasses and I pick those key areas in fall to add a little bit of color around. Let's talk about establishing a fall palette. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of uh, what comes into play when we're talking about making something fall-like or yes. appropriate for fall, it's all about the color. It is the color, so yes. So here it's, we've got a really nice array of rich purples, reds, yellows, oranges. Mm -hmm. um, is there a particular trend this season that we should be looking for? Not necessarily. Yellow is still a very hot color going right through the fall. Um, and right into the purples and oranges are very popular too. So um, any fall color, it really depends on your preference. I like the, the bright oranges with the, you know, pulling out with the croton and things like that. But it depends on your preference and what you like and uh, definitely what color your house is, is always a big thing because you want it to pop against your house. So Purple, I think, is something that's been a, a big trend this season. It has. And it yeah. certainly plays very well into fall, especially when we're talking about things like cabbages and kale. Mm -hmm. um, echoed with something like purple fountain grass or arcana like this, yeah. um, it can be a really easy palette to, to play with. and could potentially be a great monochromatic look. It is, and it actually is a great one to transition from your summer planters. Quite often we have the purples and pinks in our planters, and you can pull it right through and add purple kale, um, do things like that. And it, it's, it's nice, it's not a, a traditional fall look, but it's a very nice fall look to have. Now keeping these looking fresh, fabulous, wonderful, all the way through until we want to transition to winter. Yeah. Um, how do we go about doing that? What should we do to take care of these? Um, simple watering and, and a light fertilizing. Um, fall planters don't typically need a lot of fertilizer, but a balanced fertilizer every couple weeks is fine. And just keep them well watered into the fall. If we still have the hot summer days, make sure you are still paying attention to your planters. Um, and really, that's all you're going to have to do. That's not Very so low bad. maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> and I expect uh, maybe we'll hear from you again as we uh, approach the winter months and talk about uh, how to transition once again <laughs> yeah. from yeah. fall into winter. Yeah. Amy thank you some really beautiful options here I always get so inspired with the approach of the fall season yes, with so some I. really fresh new color so I can't wait to get to back into the landscape in this wonderful season thank Great. you no problem thanks Chris coming up after the break more ways to freshen up in September on Terra at home Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. When we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. Well, some brands have filler like sand and gravel stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage. Welcome back to Terra at Home, where I'm now joined by Colleen Zimmerman. Thank you so much for being with us, Colleen. Oh, my pleasure. You're the nursery and perennial buyer here at Terra, but you're also an accomplished floral designer. So I'm hoping this morning that we can pick your brain. We've got all sorts of beautiful colors erupting in the landscape of late summer, and now as we're moving into September, 
it's a great time to take advantage of all the beautiful seasonal color available and bring it in the house. Definitely, there's so many things happening in the garden right now. Lots of different colors and lots of different blooms that you can enjoy inside as well as outside. So we'll, uh, we'll pick your brain a little bit about how best to do that and maybe some tips and tricks about uh, making the most of our cut flowers. Uh, you've got a few beautiful arrangements, simple arrangements that you've done just in the last minute or so. You wouldn't <laughs> believe it, before the camera was rolling it took 30 seconds to put this bouquet together. So it's not as difficult as it seems, but it's just a simple set of principles. So we've got limelight hydrangea with Asiatic lilies mm -hmm. and that's it. Pretty much, yeah, it's really easy. Um, the best thing, especially if you've never arranged flowers before, is keep it simple. Keep a theme of color or just keep a couple different flowers. Don't go too crazy on the variety of flowers that you're putting in with it. So I think that's what makes this one work so well. It's just two types of flowers and then you've accented with some nice uh, simple leaves of, high, of uh, hosta and uh, it works. You've then, I also noticed that you've mixed them together so that mm -hmm. it's not all sort of one on one side or onesie twosie, it's just sort of a nice random mix of things together. Is that sort of a good rule? Yeah, the one nice thing, especially with hydrangeas, is that you can nestle other flowers in with them. And same thing with the lilies, that since there's more than one bloom per stem, then you can mix other flowers and then they just all nest together and then you have a nice compact bouquet. It's a beautiful bouquet. Um, let's move over here again. Simple is nice when you're perhaps just starting out. So again, we've got uh, a set of sunflowers in a mason jar, a single bloom of hydrangea in a nice bowl, and then what have you got here with that little teeny weeny arrangement in the front? Sometimes you have a broken stem or a flower that's just, they don't have very long stems on them, so you can just put them in like any little jar, you can put them in a baby food jar. Oh. Uh, so we just have some lavender here and some, um, some pink hydrangeas actually and just something really simple. And you can put it on a windowsill or you can put it at somebody's place setting. Yeah, it's a beautiful little idea and it wouldn't take a whole lot of effort or time to make small individual place settings exactly. for a, a late season dinner party. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So we're going to uh, learn a few things about actually how to physically cut the flowers from the garden and put them together into a beautiful arrangement. We've got a great assortment of cone flowers around us, basically mm -hmm. daisy type flowers. Um, how are we gonna make them work together? Well basically the theme of this one would be all daisy flowers. So since they're all the same shape, then they kind of go together that way. And then you can kind of mix and match your colors with it. Okay. So when you're cutting, you want to make sure that you have nice long stems. And it's best to cut first thing in the morning or later in the evening. Oh, that's good to know. The temperatures are cooler and the flowers tend to be more hydrated, so they'll last a lot mm. longer in the cut flower. That makes sense. So mid-afternoon when the sun is at its hottest, you might get a cut that won't last quite as long. Exactly, because mm, the flower doesn't have as much moisture in the flower itself. I'm sure it's a concern for some people too, with flowers out in the garden, you think, okay, well, I'm enjoying them in the garden. I don't want to cut them all off and bring them in the house, but you don't need to cut them all. You don't need to cut them all. You just need a few, and actually it helps the flowers bloom longer and bloom better because the plant will actually bush out a little bit more and then it promotes more blooms. Okay, so bringing a few in isn't going to hurt anything, it's just actually going to help keep things blooming. Exactly. Alright, so how would I go about cutting this one right here? This is a, a Rebecca, a Goldstream Rebecca Black Eyed Susan. It's a favorite among many people mm -hmm. in the garden and I imagine I want as long a stem as possible. Exactly. The best idea is to cut as long a stem as you can and then you can adjust it to the size of container that you're doing afterwards once you have the bouquet together. Okay, so I'm just going to take this nice sturdy stem and that's another good thing about this particular type of flower. Um, all of the cone flowers really have nice mm -hmm. sturdy straight stems. This one has a whole bunch of different blooms on it. See this is why you're the expert, I'm making a mess already. And when you're cutting the flowers too, you want to go down as far into the plant as possible so that you don't see where your cut was and then you won't notice that you actually did a cut flower. Ah. And then I'm just cutting some echinacea here. We have some green jewel. Beautiful. Some tangerine dream. Echinacea is a group of flowers that have enjoyed so much popularity and we've got all these brand new hybrids available like tangerine dream and and green jewel. It's a stunning array of colors and to bring them in the house I think it's going to be really special. Mm -hmm. So with this bouquet you can notice there's lots of different colors happening but like right. I said that with the different daisy type flowers that's what makes it kind of go together. So now we've got a few cut here and I'll just start arranging them. Okay. And you want to make sure that you remove all of the foliage that's going to be below the water. Okay. This will help keep the water cleaner, longer, Otherwise it starts to decompose in the water and then you get kind of a messy water and you have to change the water. Ah, so if you have whatever's below the water you should pick the leaves off and the ones above you can leave? 
Yes. Would it be harmful to take all of the leaves off? Is it a bad practice? Should you leave some? Um, I usually like to leave some, especially with this type of bouquet because it gives it a little bit more of a natural look. Now when you're arranging them, it doesn't matter if the stems are all the same at the bottom because I'm going to cut those at the end. Ah, oh, so you actually arrange them in your hand first and then you put them exactly. in the vase. Oh. This is what gives it um, what's called a hand-tied bouquet. Okay. And then with this one being so branchy, then you can kind of mesh it around the other flowers. Ah. Now in the middle, you've put some beautiful plumes of, a, of grass that's mm -hmm. a lovely accompaniment. I guess really picking things from your garden that are in bloom at the same time sort of already lends itself to a bit of a theme. It's like a, a late summer bouquet exactly. or an early fall bouquet and it's all stuff that works together naturally in the landscape. Exactly. And since they bloom the same time, then you know they're, they're naturally occurring together. Now if you were to put tulips in this bouquet, it would look a little awkward. Ah. And just There'd be something wrong with it. You wouldn't probably know what it was, but... Visually it wouldn't, it wouldn't jive. Exactly. And I noticed you're putting sort of the tall stuff toward the center mm -hmm. um, and dispersed throughout to sort of give it a, a bit of interest. Yes, and as I'm doing it, I'm kind of turning the arrangement. So it's kind of an all-around arrangement. And then that gives you, when you, once you put it in the vase, it gives you the whole look all the way around. Wonderful. I'm just going to cut a few more stems here, just to give it a nice and full look. Beautiful. And you gotta go with that nice dark pink hydrangea, or the dark pink mm -hmm. echinacea, which is of course a classic. Yep, I'll just put a few more pieces of grass in here. Now a nice finishing touch for an arrangement is something that you've done here. Leaves of hosta, you can't go wrong to sort of finish the whole thing off and, and make it look done. Yes, the leaves around the edge I always like to put on because it kind of frames the bouquet. So with this, especially with hosta leaves, when I put them on, I kind of raise them up and then that will push any of the other foliage that's on them upwards. Beautiful. And other leaves that you can use in the garden, you can use curly willow, you can use fern leaves, any kind of leaves you want. Lovely. Almost out of time, so all we have left to do is just sort of even out the bottom and then put it in the vase, is that how exactly. it goes? Exactly, so I'm just trimming all the stems to be the same length. That way they'll kind of sit in the container. How often should you change the water to keep it fresh? Keep an eye on it, usually minimum once a week. But if it starts to go cloudy or murky, you want to do it ahead of that time. Absolutely beautiful. Colleen, thank you so much for the great tips. Thank you for joining us. Uh, coming up after the break, more great fun in the kitchen with Chef Rachel. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. back to Tara at home where we're now joined in the kitchen by Chef Rachel. Hi, Thanks Chris. as always for being with us, Rach. My pleasure. Um, we've got some great ideas today for back to school. Of course, now it's September mm -hmm. and that means back to school for the kids, back to the routine for mom and dad. And uh, I'm hoping you can give us some great fun ideas for maybe uh, some school lunch plans. Yes, uh, we have a couple things that we're going to do. We're going to start off with pizza. So this is a great idea for lunches. Um, you know, you can make them the night before or the morning of, put them in the oven, cook them, won't take long, just on some pitas, and then uh, in the lunchbox and the kids can eat, can eat the pizza at school for lunch uh, or as a snack, just room temperature, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, you can have fun with the ingredients and what you put on it. You can even have them help you make it, Perfect. which is good. It's so a we'll great way to get the veggies in too. I mean, obviously for, for parents, eating healthy is a concern, so we want to make healthy food fun and pizza is a good way to do that where you can get lots of veggies on top, 
um, and we'll we'll get into some fun colorful fruit and other things as well this morning mm -hmm. but uh, let's let's start with that pizza yeah so pizza is actually a very healthy snack if you use the right ingredient so we're using um, pitas these are white pitas I think these are nice and sturdy for your pita pizzas but you can you can get them whole wheat too if you want to have something a little healthier mm -hmm. um, and then a tomato sauce I just get um, whole canned tomatoes and just mix it with some garlic, some herbs and spices, so there's nothing really added into the tomato sauce. Uh, that you're just buying off the shelf, it's just crushed tomatoes. Yeah, making it yourself, it, it's a great way to control the quality of ingredient and you're controlling things like sodium, that kind of thing mm -hmm. that can really sneak into processed foods. Right, so um, that's great. If you want to do it from scratch too, I mean you can just dice up fresh tomatoes and, and cook it down until till they're not really chunky anymore and then that can go on as well. So. Um, so I'm going to make two different kinds of pizza here, but we're going to use the tomato sauce as the base for both of them. Okay. Um, then when you're when you're talking about cheese, um, we have mozzarella cheese that we're using here. And you can buy the low-fat cheese as well, which um, helps with um, with you know health concerns. Uh, and of course Mozzarella is not where the buck stops, so you could always always make these with other options too. Feta, of you could do kind of a Greek style pizza, mm -hmm. all sorts of great stuff. Great, so the first one, uh, again, we're gonna put mozzarella on both of these, but the first one we're gonna do is a margarita pizza. So it's fairly simple, I think the kids will will love it, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, it's just tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, and some fresh basil. So if you oh. can grab me some fresh basil slices. This is one of my favorites. Um, it's simple, but it's really tasty. Well, and in September, of course, our herbs are still doing beautifully in the garden, mm -hmm. on the windowsill, so getting the most out of them and using them well they're still available and uh, and so fresh and delicious. It's it's a real treat to be able to still use them. Right, and I mean you can use any herbs on your pizza that that um, the, you know the kids like thyme or rosemary. You can put anything on there. So on the first one, I just put whole the whole leaves, but you can chop it up as well. And I suppose that depends on your child. I mean, if uh, if we don't like big hunks of stuff, you can always dice it really fine. Of course. You've showed us before how to do a chiffonade. So um, that could sometimes be a, a fun way to, to mix things in with the cheese and make it a little bit more simple. Exactly. Okay, great. And then this one, um, pepperoni. Of I think it's always a, always a favorite with the children. Um, and then I just have some vegetables. So I've diced up some fresh tomato. We'll sprinkle on some yellow pepper for for color and mushrooms uh, but you know if you have uh, anything left over in the fridge from dinner the night before if you have some chicken that you can kind of shred up and put on top or maybe you have uh, leftover meatballs or ground beef that can that can go on as well ooh taco pizza mm -hmm. with ground beef would be delicious yeah you can really have a lot of fun with it no tradesies on this lunch, I don't think. I don't think, think so. <laughs> I, I'd be very happy with this lunch at school. So there we go, a nice healthy pizza. So we'll get those in the oven. Mm -hmm. How long do they have to cook for? Uh, I'd, I'd say try 10, 15 minutes, kind of have a look at it. And, you know, it depends on the pita that you're using, but you want it to be cooked all the way through and kind of nice and crispy on the bottom. Uh, so we'll start with 15 minutes and we'll see how that goes with those pitas. Now, of course, uh, the pizza is sort of the main story, but of course we need little snacks to go along with lunches as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, then there's also after school to think of, and healthy after school snacks are a must have in the house. Right. So you've got a good idea for that too. Right, so for this, um, we have apple, um, some cheddar cheese, and slices of ham. Uh, we're gonna make a kind of like a fun, neat looking, colorful snack that, uh, that would be really tasty. So I'm just going to cut this apple, it's a Granny Smith apple, into wedges. Okay, get the core out of there. I can put that to the side. Okay. So we'll do up a couple of these. Simple, but tasty. Which is key. It is. <laughs> we'll cut some in rectangles or triangles, just kind of makes it look a little more fun and interesting. And then this is just regular Black Forest ham really really thinly sliced I've cut them each slice in half uh, horizontally and then you can just wrap it in there you can serve this with a little dip if you'd like to you can make up a dip of uh, plain yogurt and a little bit of Dijon mustard in there and then you know the children can use that to dip this into if they like something like that um, but I think that looks 
very appetizing. I like it. Can I try nice one? And colorful? Please do. I'm going to do mine with a rectangle. And that's a fun, that's a fun thing. And this, you can do variations on this as well. Uh, rather than apple slices, I mean, um, we can still have fun with things like pears and turkey, yeah. that kind of thing. It's a great little snack. Um, and again, get the fruit in, mm -hmm. nice lean meat, and uh, it sure beats reaching for the potato chips when we get home from school. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of great things as long as you, you know, make it, make it colorful and look fun. I think kids will really enjoy enjoy eating it. There's also other great ideas like hummus is very healthy if your children like hummus or um, peanut butter may not be something that you want to take to school but great for after school snacks with veggies or fruit. Perfect. Um, as a healthy snack. Yeah. So when we come back one more great healthy snack idea and uh, we'll get the pizzas into the oven and they'll be finished when we see you after the break for more Tara at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Chef Rachel has some great ideas for school lunches. Of course, we're now back in September, mm -hmm. and we've got some beautiful lunch pizzas that have come out of the oven. They're ready to go. Yep, they take about 15 minutes at 375. Um, so just let them cool. Like I said, you can do them ahead of time. And cut them up into, you know, four, pack them in a lunch, and, and it's a great lunch or a snack for school. So it doesn't take very long. Uh, we've also got wrapped up um, cheese and apple and ham snacks mm -hmm. and you've got one more great colorful snack idea. Right, so this is uh, just fruit kebab. So I made one already. They, they're very appealing to the eye, I think. I mean, it's fruit, so it's sweet. It's a great snack, um, yet healthy for the kids. So I just picked some fruits that are all different colors, strawberries, grapes, um, pineapple, peaches, and melon. Uh, I have a cool tool which is called a melon baller. Naturally. So, um, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. any any melon or you know, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, um, you just kind of scoop it in there and twist it, and it gives you fun shapes. So it's a you know, something that's a little different to make your fruit actually look neat and different instead of just in chunks. So uh, then you just skewer it. So um, I like to rotate it with the colors. So this is something that the kids can, you know, take in their lunch and have as a snack or eat when they get home and uh, nice and healthy for them. Fantastic. Of course, as always, you can find this and all of Chef Rachel's recipes online at terragreenhouses.com. And I'm not there going go. back to school, Rachel, but I sure am ready for some of that pizza. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned next week for more great ideas from the kitchen, the garden and beyond on Terra at Home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Oh, when we first bought the house, the lawn was nothing but brown. So I called my father-in-law. You know, he's really good with the lawn. He knows exactly what to do. Well, I told him, you're Scott's turf builder. He said, well, I got this other stuff. And I told him, take it back to the store. But some brands have filler, like sand and gravel, stuff you don't want on your lawn. Scott's turf builder is pure food. Every granule is 100% nutrition. You get what you pay for every time. You see what happens, Tim, when you listen to your father-in-law? <laughs> All food, no filler. That's the Scots Advantage.